Munts Stereo, not affiliated with Munts TV. Hey guys, it's time to once again visit a format that uh, was exciting and new in the 1960s, and that is the four-track endless loop tape. And this is a four-track endless endless loop tape player that uh, was introduced by the Munts Stereo Company back in the 60s. And, uh, you know, it's kind of simple and elegant at the same time. You know, there's just something very simple about it. Um, I think probably the coolest thing about it was the forward thinking of its creators. And uh, what they didn't realize that their technology would be resurrected in the 1990s, and maybe even sooner than the 90s, maybe even back in the 80s, by another company to produce tapes for background music to be sold to corporations to play music in their establishments. So I discovered some tapes that were produced by the Yesco Corporation, and here they are. This stack of tapes here I discovered on eBay and bought them all together as a, as a set. And what they are is four track tapes. So, you know, there's nothing like resurrecting an old technology and reusing it again. Because this was the time when digital was not um, yet portable. So there was no iPods at the time that this was created, although digital format was still among us, but I guess there still wasn't a cheap way to put a lot of music in one place. So think of this tape here that you're seeing, not the Xanadu one. Think of this as the predecessor to the iPod. Um, this is a four track tape, although it's not stereo four track, and it has uh, four programs on it and uh, look at all the music. Look at all of these songs that are on here. So you could uh, buy a machine from this corporation, from Muzak here, and put this machine, or put this in the machine, and it would just play in the background at your company. So you could entertain your shoppers with this music. So all the music that's on here is from the 1990s, and you can see the uh, copyright dates on them there just to show you some some of the songs that are there. Uh, I don't particularly see the 90s as one of our most exciting eras for music, especially pop music, but um, I am a pop music fan. So um, there's some, uh, just to show you some of the other titles that are on this one here, some Aaron Neville in there and some Madonna and uh, In Vogue. Mary Chapin Carpenter, Hall & Oates, Howard Jones, Toby Keith, got some country in there. So just kind of give you an idea. Uh, and of course you can see on the bottom here, Muzak and Tones are registered trademarks of Muzak Limited Partnership. All rights reserved, not for sale. And uh, licensed by BMI there. So, uh, so nothing like taking a four-track format and resurrecting it. Now, let me show you what the original four-track tapes look like in case you hadn't seen one already. So this is what the tapes look like back in the 1960s as you were to buy the, the pre-recorded tapes. Now, now, this is one of the first, if not the first, pre-recorded tape format for, uh, for automobile use. So uh, there was pre-recorded tape formats like Reel to Reel, but uh, taking a reel-to-reel -reel in your car was a bit cumbersome, so uh, a company decided to invent uh, something a little bit more portable to take in your car. So this is a pre-recorded tape here, and the interesting thing about it, if uh, you didn't know it already, is that there is no pen roller in this cartridge. Unlike an 8-track, which is why I had this out, this is the soundtrack for Xanadu, and the 8-track does have a pen roller built into the cartridge. So when you don't have a pinch roller, what do you do? Well, you have to have a well to put the pinch roller in. And then when you insert the cartridge, you have to have an ability to engage the tape with the pinch roller. And you can see that action happens just like that. Now, how does it happen? It happens with me pulling literally manually 
on this lever. Now, these tapes here, this particular one, is 4-track stereo. So if you notice, there's only two programs on there because we need all four tracks to have stereo sound on both programs. On these here, you have four programs because each track is one channel on the tape. So these are not stereo, although they are high fidelity and they are recorded at the same speed, which is three and three quarter inches per second, I believe, which is also the same speed that eight tracks were recorded at. Now, another cartridge that happens to work on this system is this little guy here, and this is a cart that was used in radio stations. Now, it does play on this deck, but it doesn't play at the right speed because uh, these were recorded at seven and a half inches per second. So if I play it on here, it's gonna play slow. Here, I'll show you. So the forward thinking part that I mentioned earlier is because this machine doesn't have a little well in the front like an eight track player would have where you just insert it into the into the uh, the bay and then that's all you get. Well, this one was made wide like this so that you could put different sizes of cartridges on it. In fact, there was even a singles cartridge that was about this wide and plugged up into there and you could play like one or two songs off of the singles cartridge. So they had singles, doubles, triples, quadruples, and cartridges probably that could hang off the end of this player here. Um, the reason that this is not in a cabinet is because when I received it, the, camp, the, the, uh, the cabinet actually broke and it's made out of wood and I'm working on gluing it back together. So it's gonna be a lot prettier once it's glued back together. But I did wanna give a shout out to these folks and this is uh, Kate's Track Shack. And I do thank these guys, Dan and Kathy Gibson, there's their information, because they provided me this four track at a really reasonable price. Uh, on eBay, these go pretty pricey. So if you're looking for four track or four track tapes or eight tracks or eight track tapes, give them a shout. All right, enough of those guys. So again, here is the, uh, the cart, and if I push it up on there and I pull the lever. And again, this is the song Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel. So as you can see, it plays a bit slow, but it's the same fit and the same um, controller works in the same type of cartridge. So uh, if we take one of these 60s, now one of, they, they did make decks that could record. This one cannot record, but they did make decks that re recorded and I had one of those and it is on my channel and it was part of a gigantic uh, combination unit that had a, um, had a record player and uh, I don't think it had a tuner, but it had, uh, I don't know, it was just big, and the turntable had issues, but the, but the player I was able to get working again, and this one here didn't require much of anything as far as restoration goes. And to tell you guys the quality of stuff that was made back then in the 60s, this thing did not have to be recapped to get it to go again. I mean, it just plug and play. The amplifier had nothing wrong with it. It was fine. Uh, it really just needed some lubrication and uh, a new belt, and... Um, that brought it back to life again. So uh, one more thing about the functionality of this. Um, eight track decks, the head actually operates on its own. So it will switch tra tra tracks, channels uh, automatically uh, using a servo mechanism, but uh, this one moves manually. And the way it moves is once again with a lever. So there's no automatic switching to programs, okay? Just up and down like that. That's all you get. So, uh, all right. So here's a pre-recorded, I mean, not a pre-recorded, but a home-recorded uh, tape made back in the 60s. Actually, I take that back. This is one I recorded on the uh, machine that I had uh, momentarily. So this has actually got DC talk on it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I 
things about this unit that uh, I did have trouble with is the speed. And it was playing a bit slow. And I'm going to show you the way I cheated and got the speed up a little bit. But uh, it's either too fast or too slow. And uh, maybe you guys have an idea of a better idea to, to change the speed. But I didn't want it to sound like it was dragging. So I'll show you what I did to, to fix that. All right, so pre uh, non-pre-recorded tape. And uh, really go back in time here and play this. Sandy Nelson tape. So we got some super drums going. Now you probably want to see what these uh, look like when they're playing. So let me show you one of these. So look at how big this thing is. This cartridge is gigantic. So I'll show you in comparison. This is how big the four track tape is in comparison. So there's a gigantic reel on the inside of this cartridge with tons of tape on it to, to bring you hours and hours of uh, listening enjoyment. Uh, at least to your uh, establishment, work establishment. So here we go. So same deal. We just push it up snug up against this this right uh, guide here until it stops, and then you pull this lever back. Now, in order to get the uh, the different, in order to get the different channels, you have to use your balance control on the front here, which is also called separation. So you got your volume, which is loudness, your near, your separation, and your contour, which is your tone control. Little uh, indicator light there that powers on. So to change the channel, literally, you change your separation. And again, it's mono, not stereo. So that's how that works. So you play those for several hours until you get sick of them, and then you can pop another one in. Turn it on. So there you go, it uses the same tracking and head uh, arrangement, track arrangement on the tape as these uh, original old four track tapes from the 1960s. Isn't that something? So uh, that was the reason I wanted to obtain this unit is so I could play these tapes on it and show it to you guys. So let's flip it over. I'm gonna show you what's underneath this guy. So you can kind of see uh, the, uh, the struggle here is, uh, well, the change I made with the speed is uh, I put a little tiny rubber ring on this spindle to uh, to basically make the area that the that the belt is attached to wider, which would increase the speed. So uh, I did accomplish that goal, but uh, I think it's a tad bit too fast, but not horribly fast, and it does sound better than it did uh, originally. But uh, this gigantic flywheel here, big, huge piece of metal thing, is what we're driving the capstan with. So uh, just to look around here, you got a, a little uh, transformer there and a big capacitor and 
your speaker outputs there and I've got these cheapy uh, Sony speakers attached to it just to have something to play through uh, let's see here's your power transformer there and your uh, amplifier circuitry here and uh, I did spray down the knobs with some contact cleaner so that we could uh, get that and look there's lots of capacitors in this thing so it's just it's always exciting to see that companies did care about their products and and built them with some quality although they probably you probably paid a pretty penny for this uh, this unit back in the day strangely enough there is these wires here that are hanging out and they are cut and I don't know what exactly they do other than the fact that they might be pre-amplifier outputs. So if you wanted to connect a couple jacks that is not uh, routed through the amp, you could uh, connect them there. I don't know. I'm not sure. I've never seen anything like that. But uh, it doesn't appear to have been to have severed or broken anything in the unit. So, uh, yeah, so over here you've got your, uh, you know, volume controls and stuff and no LED, you've actually got a lamp in there to indicate your power. So, a uh, little fan there on the motor to keep it cool, and it does run really hot after it's been running for a while. And uh, and there you go, uh, quality. Quality built right in. This thing probably sat in storage for how many years? 30, 40 years? And um, I knew that because when I opened it up, there was a gigantic dead spider inside, and... A dead roach so uh, this thing was probably just sitting in storage so always cool to bring this old technology back to life and uh, and make it do something so and it is heavy so I'm gonna flip it back over so um, so that's basically it uh, here's your head assembly here and uh, this is a curious little thing right there it's I'm thinking it's some kind of grounding wire or something because uh, I really don't know why else you would run purple wires over to this thing and then and that is just glued to the chassis here, which is metal. And uh, then they had some tape, striped tape that was on the platform here, I guess to indicate where the, the tapes go. I did peel two of those off that were pretty worn and uh, cleaned it up a little bit. The motor has a, a couple of slots where you can drop some oil in there. It tells you where to put it. So that's kind of cool. So you can see the motor there is nice and quiet. Still running after all these years. Pinch roller was in good shape. Of course, it had never been, it wasn't stored attached to the capstan, so it didn't end up with any dents or anything on it. And uh, you can see the big flywheel turning underneath all of that. Kind of cool. So. I took this part here off and put some oil inside of it and um, adjust it. You adjust the, uh, the tracking on the head with these two screws here. So I just kind of turned them a little bit left and right just to make sure I had the right tracking alignment. And um, you know, the rest is pretty straightforward. I would assume there was some kind of pad that was sticking out here at some point because there's a remnant of it there. And as far as the tapes go, these tapes will probably have to have new padding put on them because that seems to be the first thing to go on these is the, the pad that goes behind the pressure pad behind the tape that pushes the tape up against the head firmly it tends to rot over time. And uh, what I've used in the past to make uh, new foam for those is I'll buy these paint brushes that have foam they're foam paint brushes and just cut the foam to little tiny squares and put a little dab of super glue on the back side of it and glue it in there. And that's worked for me before, especially with some two track cartridges that I had for a while. So if you haven't heard of those, you can check out two track technology on my channel as well. So we got two track, four track, eight track, and um, I'm sure there's many other tracks, but those were, uh, those weren't in cartridge format, but uh, anyway, this is what I enjoy the most, guys. I enjoy finding these old technologies, these old formats, and demonstrating them for you, and maybe setting you off on an adventure to find one yourself and play around with them. Really kind of fun stuff. 
So now that I've got this restored, I've got to get the cabinet put back together. And once I do that, I'll have hours and hours of listening enjoyment with all this 90s pop music here in this gigantic stack of uh, tapes. So anyway, if you enjoyed this and thought it was nerdy and geeky enough, uh, share it with with a geek or a nerd friend that you might have and uh, leave a comment, like the video and subscribe to my channel and uh, keep watching for more excitement as I discover technologies from our past and share them with you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.